I think tennis is really cinematic. To sit there really and watch extraordinary human beings do something with such precision. I mean, it might be a bit like what you admire about a really great actor. It's been unbelievable psychological discipline. There was a plot twist and the next thing, it all fell away. It's just like the most dramatic movie, really. The season's first slam, Australian Open 2023 at iconic Melbourne Park. The hottest ticket in town, the hottest ticket in tennis. It's the first slam that Serena and Roger will watch as retirees. Iga, Ons, Coco, Felix, they are the here and now. The new stories unfolding and what stories can the new youngsters coming through create or perhaps some of the old guard, can they create history? They are not gonna relinquish their stranglehold on this event, certainly on the men's side anytime soon. You know, Rafa coming back after what he was able to achieve last year and then looking to come back this year and defend. But of course, Novak's back in the mix now. So how is that going to affect his chances? Right. Novak going for La Decima, number 10 here at the Australian Open. Of course, the big question is how is that left hamstring going to hold up? I do feel that Djokovic is hampered a bit, but it, it's so impressive the way he is still able to manage a point, manage a match, and I think it's gonna be tough for anybody to kind of dethrone him. And then you've got the Herculean efforts of people like Andy Murray, man, that guy's heart, it's, it's the size of I don't know what, but he just keeps digging. It just shows you that this generation, it's just been jaw-dropping. Tennis is in an incredible place. Everybody said after the top uh, three will stop, it's going to be a disaster. I don't think so. I think uh, I think the level is great. You have a lot of exciting players with Berrettini, Zverev, Medvedev, Tsitsipas. I think Steph is in a good moment. He has a chance to be in the final, potentially. And then again, the next one with the young, young ones. I think of the likes of Yannick Sinner, who I'm a big fan of. I love the way he plays. Francis Tiafo, Holger Rune, that guy's got game. And then you've got somebody like Sebi Korda, you know, comes from a family with rich tennis history, especially here at the Australian Open. I think the Americans have got 13 players inside the top 100 as we speak right now at this year's Australian Open. The American men, they're friends, they know each other, they've practiced together, or they've played some of the same tournaments, or you know, their careers have sort of you know, been aligned in some small way. And so I think it makes it a little easier to relate and to feel like, okay, I can take a little motivation. Um, you know, from, from Taylor Fritz getting into the top 10 uh, with Francis Tiafo, I think you know, he's been a real motivating factor. Right now, I feel like things are working for the American men. We've seen new faces, Ben Shelton, this is great, and I was impressed by his tennis. First time in his life he is, he's competing uh, out of the US. Nice to see Michael Mo doing well because he was a you know, top junior. Tommy Paul has been putting in the work over the last year or two. He's quick around the court, he's added a level of aggression to his game, and now those dividends are paying off. Jesse Pagula has been so impressive, obviously working her way up the ranks. The fact that she said uh, three quarters in a row now here at the AO, it tells her that perhaps this is this is going to be the one where she, she does it as far as the majors are concerned. Somebody like Coco, she likes to be the attacking player. She's the one who likes to be on offense. She's going to be a, a multiple major winner. I think with Arena Sabalenka, I've really liked the way that she has looked, and I think she's coming into her game. Elena Rabakina off the win in Wimbledon last year. I think that was a massive boost for her confidence. She has got some serious shot making of both sides. Magdalenette, for me, she's a player that I have a lot of respect for. I've been watching her for quite a number of years. And I think even having Iga Swiatek kind of burst up the way she has, I think that's given Magdalenette a little more motivation as well. Ostapenko is another one of those players. It doesn't matter who's on the other side of the court. She's got unbelievable self-belief. And when her shot making is on, we know that she can beat the very best. I've been impressed with Azarenka. The pedigree, the champion that she is, the experience. It's one of those intangibles that you can't look past, especially here. I believe she can beat anybody in the draw. Big news coming out of the Australian Open with Carlos Alcaraz.
progress, the world number one, pulling out. Venus Williams withdrawing with an injury. Ida Tomlanovic pushes to keep her Australian dream alive. This is the worst thing that really could have happened this year, and it did. You know, the start of the year is always a little bit tricky, and you hope that your best players are going to be healthy, they're going to be able to play and compete the first major of the year. So when we had the, the pull-outs with Alcaraz not coming, of course, the number one player in the world as far as the men are concerned, you know, the, the, the local interest with uh, Arda Tomjanovic and, of course, uh, Nick Kyrgios. Obviously, I'm just exhausted from everything and, you know, obviously pretty brutal. Um, in one of the most important tournaments of my career, and so it hasn't been easy at all. I was kind of looking forward to see how he would handle it all, how he would handle some of the tension coming back as a defending doubles champion. I mean, it was crazy last year at the AO. For a while, you think, well, how is that going to affect the tournament? But the beautiful thing about these majors is that they are very much bigger than any player, and there's always going to be storylines. That's the great thing about the majors. It's the Australian Open, the show goes on. It's special Australian Open. Uh, it's also the magic of the five sets where you can be down two sets to love and end up winning. And the fact that we don't know who's gonna make it makes it even more exciting. It is the legend against the local. He drops the anchor and he secures himself the second set. It's 3 a.m. in Melbourne, and we're pulling an all-nighter. The match was obviously very up and down. I mean, there was frustration in there, there was tension, there was excitement. On one of the most memorable nights here in Melbourne of anyone's lifetime, Andy Murray somehow masters Kokonakis in the greatest comeback of his career. Thanks so much to everyone for staying. I appreciate that. Everyone, including me, I think we should all get off to bed now. <laughs> this generation, what they have achieved, it's mind-boggling. And then what they still want to achieve, even though they've achieved so much, you know, it just take, it takes it to a whole different level of respect and appreciation. And most importantly, the love they have for the sport. These opportunities for players like McDonald do not come around every day. And at this stage of his career, he will look to try and capitalize on it. That doesn't look good. It's not the foot, is it? Is it a hip flex or a hemi? Not gonna lie, this feels like a pretty significant moment. What a punishing game this is proven to be. This is close to the end. You just don't want it to be the end. You don't want to believe it's the end. McDonald strikes late in the third, and it leaves him serving for the greatest win of his life. Mackenzie McDonald topples the defending champion here in Melbourne. If it is the end of seeing Rafael Nadal in Melbourne, it has been beautiful. It has been unprecedented. And whatever happens next, there will be no one like this man. There will never be another Rafael Nadal. It's amazing how many times in his career he's, he's not been able to complete a Grand Slam or, or miss a major because of injury. And uh, it's come to hamper him here again. What a story. He's taken an opportunity against a world number two. Ange Jabeur, not quite her usual self. He takes out Daniel Medvedev in straight sets. Daniel Collins just didn't quite have an answer when Eleanor was at top line. Uh, a lot of early losses from uh, top seed players, so a lot of surprises. Um, but this Australian Open is, is always special because it's the first Grand Slam of the season and it happens really early after the pre-season, which means that a lot of players don't have really time to compete a lot. And some of them need a lot of matches to feel really fully confident. So it's not rare to have surprises. This year maybe a bit more than other years, but maybe also the fact that a lot of young guys are coming up very fast. Um, and we've seen new faces. Cochrane prevails, and he's through to the third round in what is the biggest win of his Grand Slam career. Uh, you guys were just, <laughs> just incredible. Oh my God, this is crazy, man. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to try and keep going all the way, man. Man, 
I love you guys so much. Thank you. It's been amazing to see just the energy, the number of fans around the grounds. And I feel like every now and then this first week, I thought, was it always this busy? People are here and they're so excited. It's been a big party every time I'm kind of walking through the grounds and going to different courts. Uh, it's been a big party with the music and just having fun and everybody's so happy. What is great here in Melbourne is that you have communities from almost all the countries in the world who are here and who come to support their favorites. That's great, it's so special and the players love it so much. The record crowds, the biggest in the sports history here. It just creates an atmosphere of excitement. We've had a little bit of a changing of the guard with Ash Barty retiring and Iga Swiatek. I think was so impressive the way she stepped into that space. And after already being a major champion, I think it's not easy to kind of keep finding your place in your space, find that level of consistency, the level of belief week in and week out. And that's something that Iga Swiatek has done. Rivakina will serve to knock out the world number one. And it is a seismic shock here in the women's draw at the Australian Open. On an idyllic day, it is utopia for Rivakina. Well, I felt, I felt the pressure and I felt that I don't want to lose instead of that I want to win. Into the quarterfinals, she goes. Coco Goff exits. It's difficult um, in a Grand Slam, but I hope that she continues well in the tournament now that I'm out. <laughs> um, I hope she, she wins it. Yeah, so she's I'm rooting for her all the way. Vika Azarenka, I'm a huge fan of her, so I love the way she plays. I love the intensity with which she plays. a winner here, so the feel-good factor, again, I use that word a lot, but we must not underestimate the feeling a player gets when they come back to a place where they've had uh, former glories. And she started the tournament in the best possible manner, beating a former champion and Sophia Cannon, and, and I thought her, her match against Keyes in particular was very good because she started poorly. Keyes was on fire, dominating proceedings. I think she lost the opening set 6-1 if memory serves and then, uh, you know, bounce back in the best possible manner. In fact, hit keys off the court, so she reversed the roles there. And when she is shot-making like that, I believe she can beat anybody in the draw. Azarenka is back. The first Australian Open semi-final in a decade. Sabalenka, absolutely brilliant today. A straight sets winner and through to the semi-finals of the Australian Open. Cool, calm, collected and into the semi-finals. The Wimbledon champion into a semi-final at the Australian Open for the first time. <laughs> the delight. What a moment for Magda Lynette. Uncharted territory for the Polish player. Straight sets victory. She grew up idolizing Monica Seles. She's playing like her too. What a performance. With Lynette, she's become an even better competitor. She's gained more belief in her game as well. I mean, that's one of the beauties of, of this game. It, there's no time limit as long as you're out there tossing the balls up and you're in the fight. For the first time, Novak Djokovic is a Grand Slam champion. For the second time, Novak Djokovic. For the third time, he collects it for the fourth time. Djokovic wins again. It's a record tying six Australian Open title for the serve. The historic seventh Australian Open title. It's an eighth Australian Open. Nirvana for Novak is nine Australian Open titles. Majestic 
in Melbourne again. Beating Novak in a Grand Slam final is probably the most challenging thing in tennis at the moment. And there is always a chance, but it's difficult to see anyone else than Novak winning here. Novak through to the last four, and you won't find too many here in Melbourne who don't believe Novak won't be the last man standing come Sunday. For a third consecutive year, Stefanos Tsitsipas will find himself in the semi-finals of the Australian Open. Hashinov wins. He's through to the semi-finals here at the Australian Open. I need to play better than him, no? Simple. <laughs> Tommy Paul, a sagacious performance from the 25-year-old to cement his spot in the final four. American tennis is coming in a big way. As an athlete, I think you have to kind of be delusional in a way. Some people would have called me delusional a couple years ago, but I'm pretty excited to be here now. Women's semi-finals action tonight here on Rod Laver at the Australian Open. The 22nd seed, Alina Rubikina, up against Victoria Azarenka. Which is a wide. Abakina takes the first set. Seven games to six. That'll do it. Our 22nd seed, Alina Rubikina is through to the Australian Open final. For a fourth time, she is just one set away from a place in a major final. The previous three, she hasn't been able to get there. Sabalenka moves through to a maiden major final. She's got to be feeling very, very pleased with herself to be through to her first Grand Slam final after that performance in tonight. It's a big day. It is semi-final Friday here for the men at the Australian Open. You cannot help but be excited about days like this. Unbelievable. Sublime from Hachinov. It's a second match point for Tsitsipas. Oh, he's, he's, he's made it. What drama, what guts. And now what tension. Remarkable reversal in fortunes to a fourth we go. Well, he's taken the scenic route to get here. What a moment. But it was worth the effort, three match points. We're going to see Steph on Sunday. He makes his way through to the championship match and will it bring him the ultimate glory. Steph definitely has his chances and then if it's a final against Novak, of course he will have a chance. No one has won more here than him. He is the top gun. Djokovic wins the opening set, but boy, did he take the scenic route to get there. Well, Djokovic, with a two sets to love lead now. Novak Djokovic looking to continue his quest to climb into a galaxy of his own. They get it. Wonderful for Team Brazil. Set a match. Two, three. Five, two, set to love. Game. Set a match. It's the coming of age for Alina Corneva. She is the 2023 Australian Open girls singles champion. But he does it. So 
overjoyed, as he should be. Top seeds have done it in style today. They were too good. Sinikova and Krajikova have gone back to back. What a way to do it. Extraordinary scenes here in Melbourne. Hitchikada and Kubler are the Australian Open champions. the checks they get, the money they get, at every level, doesn't matter what level of tournament, every time a girl or woman receives money from tennis, it goes back to that day when we signed the $1 contract. That is so relevant still. I think every tennis player, man or woman, or how they self-identify, that they should know this, because that's the moment of truth. It's a wonderful day here in Melbourne, and it is the women's singles final here at the Australian Open. Game gets off to a dream start. Elena Rabaikina has wrapped up the first set in 34 minutes. Oh, that's so good. Oh, two in a row. Sabalenka wraps up the second set in style. And in this women's final, we are going the distance. Marina Sabalenka coming out for the biggest service game of her life. So impressive, Marina Sabalenka with championship point. It's a double fault on the championship point. Sport does cruel things to the mind. I've been dreaming about this moment. I don't even remember for how many years. Serena Sabalenka is the Australian Open champ. Such an inspiration to receive a trophy from, from you. Thank you so much for everything you've done for our sport. I would love for Australia to till, till the end, you know, of my life. <laughs> <laughs> These are big moments, aren't they? This is when you feel the most alive as a sports person, right on the edge and the cusp of history making. Novak's played all of his matches in these conditions, and I, I just think he loves it. In these conditions, I find he, he's, I don't know how you beat him. Up against a player tonight that has not won one of these events. Can he today make that rare transformation from being contender material into that of a champion? I was dreaming about the trophy, lifting that trophy. Gorgeous opening set from Djokovic. Uh, I even dreamt it last night in my sleep, so the desire is really there. I really, really want it badly. Now that is a big hole. And there is tension, as you say, Fitzy. Big tension out here in this final now for the very first time. 4-3, sits a pass. Novak is, is a player that pushes you to, to your limits. And it looks as though he's going to be the best once again here in Melbourne. He leads by two sets to love. Oh my goodness, that, that's pure class. That is not an easy shot. In terms of the quality of the tennis, it's honestly some of the best tennis I've played on this court. Oh, what a shot. Oh, what skill. statement there. And Djokovic just rallying the crowd to get out of their chairs. Three championship points. Gutsy serve from Sitsipas went the body. Backhand side. 6-4. Still two more championship points. Sitsipas goes off. Forehand winner. He got the results. And now he says to Novak Djokovic, you've got to come and serve for this. 
championship point. Djokovic down the tee. Forehand from Sitsipas is deep. Working now to the backhand of Sitsipas. Backhand to backhand, both players. And now Djokovic are willing to one up the line. He's just made it. Block back from Sitsipas. It goes long! And it is 10 of the absolute best for Novak Djokovic. He owns this court. I don't think it ever happened. I just collapsed emotionally. I just huge release from everything. When I hugged my mother and my brother, it was, I put down my, so to say, mask of a warrior uh, and, and, and became a brother and a son and, and just teared up. It touches me deeply that, you know, people think that this, uh, you know, exceeds tennis. You know, of course, I'm, I'm very proud and happy.